Everybody. Welcome to our very first image review as part of Brent Durand Underwater. And this is a community review similar to what we do in a photo workshop where we look at everyone's photos, my photos, your photos, and go through some constructive critiques just to figure out how we can improve our photos, whether it's composition, whether it's lighting, whether it's the, the certain subjects or the behavior of the subjects. You know, we'll dive into all of this through this image review series and we, you know, we'll have a goal to improve all of our photos. So I picked myself as first victim here. I'm going to review some photos from Anilau. So I found these on Lightroom and thought, you know, it's a good variety of stuff, a variety of subjects, and we can, we can dive in and really discuss these and, and see what we can improve. So here we have Coleman shrimp or Colmani shrimp, and they live on fire urchins, and they're just a fun subject to shoot because they're, they're white with these red and purplish and even blue type colors. Um, really fun. There's usually two. There's a male and female pair on these fire urchins and they're just really cool. The urchins are moving so it presents a little challenge to shoot as we're trying to chase these urchins and get our shots and if they twist we're trying to reposition ourselves. So it's a lot of fun. Um, and this composition I do like uh, because I've got the primary shrimp. I go oftentimes for the larger one just because it's going to have more impact. It's a bigger subject as you're getting in close and super macro mode. You know, these are tiny shrimp. Um, and then the back one's going to be naturally out of focus just because with a diopter we've got that bokeh and it's going to be out of focus since we're focusing on the eyes of the main shrimp. So that part is good. The part that could be improved here are that the spines of the fire urchin are kind of in front of the main subject, the main shrimp, and they're blocking its arm. We can see a little of the claw peeking out here but we wanna see the whole subject. We don't wanna block the face or an important thing like the claw on a shrimp. You know, we want to see the whole thing. So that would be my number one improvement on this photo. You know, open this up so we can see the full subject and then the rest of the frame should be pretty good. In this example, we've got a crinoid shrimp, possibly a pregnant one. We see that big bulge right there. And I like this composition coming into the frame. You know, we've got nice sharp focus on the eyes. The problem is we have a white shrimp on a white crinoid with a gray, bland, meh type background. So the thing to do here, in my opinion, would be to create more contrast through a black background. And black backgrounds are really popular now. I've got a whole video tutorial on those in my YouTube channel, but that would just help create a lot of contrast with the white. So you've got the white and the red of the shrimp, the white and the red of the crinoid, and a jet black or dark black background. It's gonna have a lot of pop, and you're gonna see a lot more structure and kind of this soft um, framing of the subject, but the nice crisp focus on the shrimp, and that's what we'll wanna see. It's gonna jump right off of the screen with that black background. So if we're doing it again, that's what I would try and do for sure. In this shot, this is wide angle also in Anilau, and really interesting, you see these colors, they don't have a lot of the pop you'll see in a lot of wide angle photos underwater. That is because we're very, very shallow. This is in maybe 10 feet of water, if that, maybe you know six, eight feet of water um, towards the end of a dive site. And the reason that the colors are like this is because we're fighting the ambient sunlight. So on a lot of shallow dive sites, shooting wide angles pretty tough, uh, especially you know, most of the time, if the water is very clear and bright and blue, you're gonna run into these kind of washed out bluish type colors because you're fighting that ambient sunlight. The thing to do if you want those crisp colors is get deeper, you know, try and find a nice section of the reef below it, and then you're gonna have less ambient light from the sun, you know, that's gonna fall off as we dive deeper in the water, and your strobes are gonna create more of that vibrant light that we're used to seeing. So just something to keep in mind when you're shooting and wondering, hey, what the heck, what's wrong with my camera or the white balance? Nope, it is just the, the sunlight mixing in and the ambient light mixing in with that strobe power. And that's what's creating these colors. And here we go, we've got a bobtail squid on the sand. And these are really cool subjects. They disappear during the day, but they're just under the sand. So they're not totally gone if you're wondering where they go. Um, sometimes you can see their eyes. More likely at nighttime, you start to see their eyes. They're more active, they'll swim around, they'll be out mating, they'll be out feeding, you know, doing their whole thing. Um, they're really fun subjects. Um, the, this one is coming into the frame, which is nice. We see the eyes, we see some of the tentacles down below. 
the whole scene is a little bit dark. So that's what I would improve. And of course you can do this in Photoshop, no problem, or Lightroom, very easy. But the thing that I like to stress is to get this right in camera. Yes, Photoshop's insane, the cameras um, are insane today and you just have so much leeway, but get it right in camera, you're going to have a better image after post-processing. Um, so brightening this up, the best way to do that when shooting macro, super macro, is brighter strobe power. So you can take the strobes uh, or strobe and move it in slightly closer because the, the light from the strobe gets exponentially more powerful it, when it has to move through less water. So as you, as you move it closer, the scene's going to get brighter. That's easy. Alternatively, you can bump up the strobe power on one of your strobes or on both of your strobes if you have two, and that should brighten the scene right there by I don't know, maybe a half stop to a full stop, and then that should be bright enough and be good to go. The other thing that I see here is that the subject's a little deep in the frame. It'd be nice if we were closer, and naturally, especially if you're shooting on a compact camera or don't have a diopter, um, it's gonna be hard to get that close. You'll be operating at your minimum focus distance no matter what, but if you can get closer, try and get closer. Um, if this was as close as I could get, I'd probably crop out the top right corner of the image because now we've got the focus just on the subject a little bit brighter and it's going to take up most of the frame. So that squid will fill most of the screen here that we're looking at. Um, and that's going to be really important. Um, one way to get closer to a subject is to focus and then move a little closer. Focus again. Okay, it focused. Move closer. Oh, focused again. Wow, I'm getting really close. Move closer again, try and focus. Oh, it doesn't focus. Lens hunts a little bit. All right, that's past my minimum focus distance. Let's back up one, focus. Now I'm there. That's my minimum focus distance, shoot. And that's how you know you're as close as you can be before any need for cropping or anything like that. So just a fun tip. And here we go. We've got a leaf scorpion fish. And these guys are really cool. Just, you see that mohawk and that face shape, uh, punk rock right here. Um, just a lot of fun and they're a white subject so they do really well with backlighting um, they look really cool um, a lot of people doing cool shots with that and the black backgrounds of course so the the light colored fish and the black background boom you've got a lot of pop especially with some backlighting no backlighting especially here but um the part that bugs me a little bit is that we don't have a clean silhouette of the face or profile view of the face right here we've got some of this reef and it just feeds into the face, you know, it's about the same height and comes out like this, and it's just distracting. So I feel like the face of the subject, which is our main focus, just doesn't have the impact that we'd really like it to have in a nice, sharp, high contrast type photo like this. Um, when we start editing and post-processing, you know, we can bump up the lights and highlights and things like that, give it even more pop off the screen. But you know, this is a part that, that bugs me a little bit and why this photo, you know, kind of got buried. And here we've got a rhino shrimp, and these are really fun subjects too. Notice they've got all these, these horns and these spikes, the three in this case, and it's on a whip coral, and it's just really, really fun. They're coming all sorts of different colors, which is fun, and their textures have a little bit of a, I don't know, sparkly kind of velvet thing going on. And I was trying to go for something different here. I was not trying to fill the frame with the subject. I was trying to get the whole whip coral in the frame. And the reason I'm not a fan of this photo, you know, the, the rhino is sharp and things, but notice around here, one, it's out of focus because it's way closer to the camera than the focal point, and two, it's a bit overexposed. So between those two things, you've got this fuzzy, you know, white kind of overexposed or near overexposed area, and it just pulls my eye in there, and it's just very, very distracting. So to me, that takes away from this because your eye is attracted to the brighter part of the frame. Boom, you go into this weird out of focus type thing here. And there's actually what looks like another shrimp hiding here out of focus. But your, your eye is pulled right to this part as opposed to this part. And that's a problem with the image. You wanted your eye to go directly to the subject. So how to fix this? Well, for the out of focus piece, you know, uh, adjusting the composition would help. We can come around from the... Uh, the left side a little bit and that might help to get rid of some of this and maybe keep the wave coming through the frame but maybe if we shot from over here the wave would go out the back and kind of fade because it wouldn't have as much light as opposed to being in the front here it's closest to my strobes so like we were saying before the strobe has a higher intensity because it's um, it has less water to travel through up here versus here where the rhino shrimp is so we can either pull the strobe back and work more with this, but more importantly, maybe do that pivot and then we'll still have this line through the frame. We're going with the same 
compositional theme for the image, but will avoid the this nasty out of focus in the front and that overexposure here from being closer to the strobe, kind of a hot spot. So those are the two things I would fix right there. And here we've got a clownfish, Nemo's cousin, which is uh, pretty fun, and an anemone. And these anemones are just gorgeous to shoot. You can get really nice side lighting and back lighting. I'm sure you've seen the photos um, and they create a lot of pop. So here we've got great exposure on the, the fish, but the rest of the photos kind of drab. We don't have a lot of light on the anemone, and this background is just, I don't know what it is, it's just garbage. So how do we fix that? One, we probably want to get rid of this background. So maybe I can get lower and try and shoot, you know, more up at the anemone and the fish. And what that would do is help shoot more into the water column with less of this reef behind it, which would inherently make that a lot darker and less apparent in the frame, kind of get rid of all of that clutter. And that might help. The other thing is the lighting here. And the problem with this particular shot is that this is a very light fish and it has white stripes. So if we add more light, we might overexpose the fish and especially those white stripes. So now it's a give and take. Do we want to light and expose the fish properly or do we want to try and expose more of the anemone properly? And sure, we can go in and create all kinds of masks and layers and Photoshop and you know, spend 10 hours on the image there. But you know the goal again is to try and get it right in camera. So it's thinking about these things. What do we want to have right in, in this particular photo? So maybe what I could do is have you know, one of the strobes over here a little brighter on the left side because I'm not seeing as much there. You know, it'll hit the face of the, uh, the face of the fish, but still light up more of the anemone. And maybe the right strobe is like, uh, you know, a third of a stop lower in intensity so that I don't blow out those highlights on the fish or start experimenting like that. But those are the things to keep in mind with a shot like this that just kind of turns into something drab. Yes, it's a nice fish, but what about the rest? It's just kind of, eh. So those are the things I would think about. And there we go. So that's the first series of photos. I encourage you guys to email me with your photos. I'll make a video so that we can all learn from what we're seeing, what we're shooting, how we're composing the, the shots, how we're lighting the shots, and we can all improve week by week as we put new videos out. So thanks for tuning in and I'll see you on the next video.